is developing their own unique mobile application, crypto wallet, and access to DeFi NFTs in the metaverse. And then we've also uh, got James Duchenne, co-founder and CEO of Loot NFT, uh, the first NFT battle bidding platform that uses a proof of play protocol to power a virtual world. So. How exciting, we're going to talk about this today because it's always <laughs> such a great conversation. So first of all, what are you guys doing together? Well, what, what Pink Panda wants to do is uh, we're creating a widget for N-World and the Loot NFT metaverse. Okay. And basically what we want to do is, is create a very simplified user experience to onboard and on, an offboard um, USDC, you, you know, credits right coming into and out of the world because it's such a complicated ecosystem right now to send your money to Coinbase, to send it to MetaMask, to, you know, if you mismatch the wallets, all kinds of awful things happened, right? Yeah, so yeah. we're creating a really simplified way to get that money inbound and outbound of the metaverse in a fully compliant way that's extremely user friendly. So you're kind of creating the technology or the infrastructure behind that that make it seamless? Absolutely. I understand yeah. that sure, right? Sure, that's okay. right. Absolutely. And, yeah. and I think uh, on our side, Loot NFT is creating Lootverse. And Lootverse is a metaversal project that basically targets both enterprises, professionals, as well as the end user. So what we have is almost an enterprise grade solution where the metaverse is being built with layers of NFTs and then visualization in 3D and renderings is applied to this. So you have the ownership of the, say, the land or the building or the unit, uh -huh. much like in the real world. And then overlaid on top of that, we've got that live version for the consumers, the, the users, the explorers, the gamers, etc. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing is we're building a core and Pink Panda is basically one of our partners that's facilitating one piece of the interaction in and out from a cryptocurrency perspective mm -hmm. um, and maybe later on point systems from mileage into the metaverse, etc. So yeah. that's what they're focused on. Well, and that's actually, that's really needed. Um, because I, you know, I bought an NFT. My, my son and I wanted he wanted to buy an NFT. We did it together. I've done some other things with MetaMask. I mean, it takes like sometimes 30 minutes to figure this stuff out, <laughs> and that can't be sustainable. So it needs to be just super. It needs to be like Amazon Prime. Just agreed. do That's it. Agreed. Yeah. And where we want to go with this, right, is we'll start with this widget, but then we want to be uh, the first, one of the first wallets that has native integration into a metaverse, mm -hmm. right? So we start with the widget, then we move it into the wallet. So if I get on my wallet, I can check plot prices. I can check if my plot's being attacked. I can, uh, you know, <laughs> check my point balance. I can <laughs> see where my bids are going, all those kinds of things, right? These are what you need because, yeah. not, you know, you're not spending every day in your VR goggles, right? You're on the road and you want to know what's going on on my metaverse. That's true. Yeah, we don't want to live in our VR goggles. That's right. right. And yeah. one of the things that I want to add to this as well is what what you just touched on is user experience, right? Right now, it is a little bit all over the place mm -hmm. because as you say, you've got a MetaMask, then you've got the gas fees, and you know, my mom couldn't use it, for example, <laughs> oh, no. right? Like, it would be very yeah. hard. So when we look at, you know, how we're progressing in this space, I always take three things in consideration. The state of the technology today, the user experience, and the compliance. And all of these things, you have to juggle them at this point in time. So what we're trying to do is make the experience a hell of a lot easier and simpler for everyone. Yeah, right, for I mean, and, and even though, like, even though it's kind of clunky right now, it'll get there, it'll Absolutely. get smooth, and you kind of need to be there, Absolutely. you know, ahead yeah. of time. Absolutely. Why it gets yeah. there. That's right. So, I mean, talk to me, talk to me a little bit about Lootverse, right. and like, what what is that like? You said both business and... So it is both for business, business to business to consumer, right? So it's a B2B to C. So at the start, what we've got is, is a core infrastructure. Think about it as, you know, you've got, we've got architect, oil and gas professionals, you know, real estate mm. funds that are actually looking at a space within the metaverse for them. I'll give you an example. Um, you have a building here in New York City that you want to replicate in virtual reality, photorealistic perspective, etc. And say your son or, or my son is in the UK and he's having a birthday party. Why couldn't I be in my virtual reality house that looks exactly right. like the real house, overlooking the bay of the great empire with the weather, and we're both talking face to face in a fully immersive environment. Okay. That's where that social interaction is going, and I think this is where Facebook is capitalizing on. Okay. Because right now, the first application of metaverses, they are, they're gaming, right? Everyone knows Minecraft, Roblox. Right. But I think this is just the first layer. Mm -hmm. The next layer is going to be exploration, you know, social interactions and dynamics. Yeah, well, and if you think about like training for careers, 
I mean, like you could do a virtual surgery, um, right. you know, or, <laughs> well, you know, I mean, it's unbelievable. Yeah. I, I like to say, right, that the, the new frontier is the inner space. Mm -hmm. You know, what can we do? We're only limited by our imagination. Yeah. That's right. Okay, so what's next then? Like, is this operational now with Lude, or is that so coming soon? So we just soon? started the, the architecture and design on it. We don't okay. think it's going to take very long no, to build the widget not. out. No. Um, and then longer term on uh, Pink Panda is, you know, we see, right, and, and this space changes so quickly. We see three pillars of uh, what we're working on. Uh, DeFi access, mm -hmm. so you need to be able to access the liquidity of the underlying uh, ecosystem. Uh, NFTs, right, mm -hmm. and, and curating that content and creating the access to that. And then the, and then the metaverse integration. And, mm -hmm. and all that is built on the foundation of the community, right, that you, you build and the partnerships and the relationships that you build. Mm -hmm. and, and on our side today, what we have is seven sites basically broken apart, already working and functioning. We have, um, we've created our own blockchain in order to issue the NFTs and track all of the economic interaction within the world. We have our own political system with a parliament and member governance. Hmm. It's like a complete parallel world. Uh -huh. It's own economic activity, its own GDP. Um, and uh, what we're looking for right now, what we call the world builder stage, is are those professionals that are coming in like Pink Panda. Um, where we have a number of partners that are building in-world exchanges, like, you know, for, for the economic activity of that parallel world. Yeah. And we actually already have the in-world exchange already built just for the world. Uh -huh. So the culture and the dynamic of this parallel world is just forming right now. Mm. So it's, you know, it's super exciting. It is super <laughs> exciting. It's kind of mind blowing actually yeah. as well. So, okay, just just want to wrap up, Adam. I mean, what do you think, like, where will we, how will we live, say, in five years? How will the metaverse be in? Five years, in? so how will we okay. live in five months, right? Okay. But I, I think, one you know, year. My, one my year. vision five months, one year from now is is that not only are you fully immersed in, in virtual realities of these edge cases, think Ready Player One, right? We're in the edge yeah. case of that. Um, and so that's where we want to be integrated as well, almost like the, the visa of metaverses, right? Uh -huh. And then when you leave, I want you to be able to access through that through our wallet, right? So, uh, and, and we're actually pretty close to releasing a public beta on that. We have a private beta. Maybe next time we can review that and I can demo that for okay. you. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, I just see that, you know, creating that uh, mass adoption is, is critical, right? Because everyone wants to be a part of it yeah. and it's really difficult. So I think we're six months to a year from actually realizing that first edge case of that fully immersive mm -hmm. experience, not only from your mobile device, but also from the from the virtual device. That's correct. And, and for me on my, uh, you know, in, in closing, what I would say is to, to give value to the metaverse, which is really important. You've got to think about this as virtual properties, like a penthouse in the, in the metaverse, right? Mm -hmm. Where you can own the title detail because they're all limited in numbers. They can all be limited in numbers. And when you think about the market, uh, in 2014, I was talking to commodities funds and said, you need to have physical you know, physical gold and digital gold. And they laughed and they said, well, why do I need the fake thing? Right. It's because I've got the, t I can touch the real thing yeah. right now. Now they're not laughing anymore because they probably all have Bitcoin holes. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Today I'm having the same conversation with real estate funds. I said, mm. you should consider having a physical real estate, you know, uh, division to go along with your virtual real estate division. And they're all laughing saying, yeah. well, I can walk into my house, I can touch it, etc." And I think this is where this is going in analogy, right? When you consider that virtual real estate that are limited in number have a target market of almost 7 billion people, and if it's limited in number, mm -hmm. the value of those properties, if it's done right, can actually mimic what's happening with Bitcoin. Uh -huh. Because if you're looking at an apartment here in New York City, maybe you have a 100,000 target market. My penthouse uh -huh. in my metaverse could have a target market of a billion people. Yeah. Right, mm. so that's the way that maybe I'd like to leave you guys with um, yeah. you know, in terms of thinking, huh? <laughs> I know, when I see some of the prices for this digital like property, I'm sure. like, what? <laughs> it's kind of amazing. Thank you so much. This is gonna be fascinating to watch. So Thank you so much for having us. Thanks for having us.